Hi guys, this is GSNOM.com and I'm here with the Huawei Mate 10 Pro for a full review. We've already unboxed it and also unboxed the Huawei Mate 10 Lite, we're familiar with the Mate 10 series and we're dealing here with the flagship of the Mate 10 series. It was unveiled in November this year and launched in November and we're dealing with a glass and metal phone, the most powerful and sexy Huawei phone ever made, the one that moves on to an 18 to 9 aspect ratio and the price tag is around 850 or 900 dollars. 6 inch phablet although you wouldn't say it's a 6 incher just by looking at it. So here we go, we're talking about the design first, it's got a 6 inch screen, 18 to 9 aspect, full view display, narrow bezels and it's got the trademark raccoon band at the back for dual camera looking quite unique. Now of course it's covered with glass at the back, gently curved and luckily it's not a slippery phone, the metal frame helps with that, it can sit in your hand properly and guess what, even if it's a 6 incher you can use it with a single hand without any trace of hassle and without it being slippery, I have to highlight that. Now we got the slightly curved glass at the front, slightly curved glass at the back, if you want measurement 7.9 millimeters and 178 grams, which uh, are are a bit thicker and heavier than the Mate 9 Pro but the diagonal has increased by 0.5 inches. The phone is IP67 compatible, compliant better said, resilient to water and dust and it has the same thickness as the Google Pixel 2 XL and almost the same weight so you can get an idea of its size. It has comfy buttons here uh, with a pretty good feedback of the power button especially because it's a bit enriched. Now I have to say it's got the nice symmetry if you look at all the elements they're very well done and it's actually better than a Samsung when it comes to the symmetry. It's available in blue, grey or brown, it's got a premium build and it has got to be one of the prettiest Huawei phones ever, certainly prettier than the Huawei P10, P10 Plus and the Mate 9 Pro. Now as far as the screen is concerned, this one is called the full view screen, 6 inch 18 to 9 OLED with a resolution of 2160 over 1080 pixels which amounts to 402 ppi density. It can display 16.7 million colors, it's got NTSC colors with a 112% saturation and it's got a 18.9% 80 screen to body ratio and as well HDR10 if you're planning on watching some TV shows on the device. There's also Gorilla Glass protection and now I guess it's time to view a video and Huawei still has a video watching app, believe it or not. And it even includes uh, this uh, pop-up play feature, you can set up the speed and you can do some audio enhancement. Anyways, the viewing experience left us with very vivid colors, typical for an OLED, pretty okay brightness, I would say that the contrast is rather good and we got wide view angles. Now, the pixel arrangement and all the other details have been checked out under the microscope, but that will be revealed via the gallery. Cute picture. Uh, okay, so we go here. These are the pixels under the microscope. They're familiar. This is the Pentile Matrix setup. Now we proceed to the brightness test and um, frankly speaking, I'm a bit underwhelmed only 382 lux units, in real life it feels like more, but still I expected 450 or 500 lux. Uh, it seems more once again. With this value we surpassed the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium and LG G5, which actually the equals of the Huawei Nova and the ZTE Nubia N1. Still the phone is placed on the 142nd spot all time from all the phones we've tested, but at least it beats the predecessor Mate 9 Pro had only 354 lux. It's inferior to the LG G6 and the HTC U11 and it also offers some tweaks. So we go here, we got display, we got brightness which can be automatic, we got color temperature which can be chosen from here, touch anywhere on the circle, uh, we got the sleep mode, come on, a sleep mode, uh, there is eye comfort which can remove the hue of blue and make your eyes uh, uh, behave better at night, we got a home screen style which can be set to drawer or standard and we also have a full screen display, you can select which apps to actually show more. Uh, of the screen so they can adapt to this aspect ratio. We got a view mode which can be default or increased or resized, text, text size and screen resolution which can be HD plus or full HD plus. And the screen saver and color mode which can be set to normal or vivid. You can actually feel the difference. I prefer vivid to be honest. So in the end that's what you're getting on this handset. Those are the options available here. The screen is okay in real life, but the lux meter never lies. It should have been a tad brighter, if you ask me. 
okay let's set it up properly like this now if you want to talk about other things it's time to talk about the hardware and we have an app for that so we are dealing with a very powerful processor Kirin 970 from Huawei it's an octa core with an i7 core processor and the Mali G72 MP12 GPU plus a special neural processing unit which takes care of the AI aspect the phone comes with 4 or 6 gigabytes of RAM we have the 6 gigabytes of RAM version and it's 64 or uh, 128 gigabytes of storage and there's no micro sd slot here in case you're wondering uh, luckily the phone does not suffer from lag you can open up as many apps as you want dozens of them you can play with multiple games you can do your multitasking whatever you want zero lag which is also aided by the ai which is able to prioritize your application it's very snappy no matter what you do and i actually felt we are dealing with a potent phone here having audio on board also helps and now it's time to play Riptide GP Renegade, which is our usual benchmark game. So here we go. We've also played a first person shooter, which mimics Call of Duty World War II and is pretty badass and good looking. You can find it on our sister site, YouTube channel and website, Android Pipe. Here we go. You can already tell from the loading that Riptide GP runs just fine. Responsive control, excellent frame rate, lovely gloss of the image, no stutter, no lag, excellent aliasing, texture, shadows, whatever you want, it's here. Now, it's time to show the benchmarks, but with a quick mention, we have changed our analysis system. We are now ignoring Quadrant. From what I understood, it has been withdrawn from circulation, so we're going to focus on more popular benchmarks, such as Antutu. In Antutu 6, we beat the Galaxy S8 and Note 8, quite the achievement, but score below the HTC U11 and Xiaomi Mi 6. Then we go straight to the uh, slingshot test, the one that involves the GPU, and we should have it here somewhere. Lots of tests and lots of looking up to do. So here it is, Slingshot Extreme, quite impressive. This one is able to even beat the iPhone 8 Plus and the HTC U11, but scores below the Galaxy S8 and the Sony Xperia XZ1. We also did the famous Geekbench 4, these are the scores, and the multi-core score placed us above the Galaxy Note 8 and the Xiaomi Mi 6, but below the iPhone 8, iPhone 10, and iPhone 8 Plus. So only below them, those are the only ones that beat us. It's certainly a top 5 2017 phone performance wise and benchmarks wise however in the temperature there's a little bit of a caveat so here it's okay 34.8 degrees celsius this happens when playing the game you saw before riptide but when we did gfx bench we went to 43.7 degrees celsius which is overheating and i feel that the phone may be throttling the cpu to achieve better benchmarks i hope not because that would be cheating but uh, it may happen, not sure about that. So now it's time to move on to the battery, which sounds superb on paper, 4000 mAh, but the Mate 9 Pro also had a 4000 mAh battery. We are promised that with 20 minutes of charging, you get one day of usage, and now it's time to see how we did. So we have screenshots as usual, and I'm going to have to look for the results. Should be here somewhere. Okay, so we achieved a continuous HD video playback time of 13 hours and 37 minutes, which is excellent. Basically, one full season of Netflix can be enjoyed on this phone with ease. This totally beats the Galaxy S8, the Galaxy Note 8, the iPhone 10, and the Huawei Mate 9 Pro, but scores below the Huawei P10 somehow and only beats the... Uh, nope, only gets beaten by the Mate 9 by 6 minutes, so it's there high among the better phones. Now, in PC Mark, there was a bit of a letdown. As you know, PC Mark monitors the continuous usage of the phone only 7 hours and 47 minutes, which is actually the 63rd place. I expected more, something like 9 hours or maybe better. Now, with this result here, we beat the Xiaomi Mi 5 and the Huawei P10, but we score below the Huawei Mate 9 by quite a bit. That one scores 11 hours, and the Mate 9 Pro has 8 hours and 9 minutes, so they both beat us. And we also score below the Huawei P9i 2017, but there's a silver lining here, at least the charging is quite fast. And when I say fast, I'm talking about 
one hour and 22 minutes which is excellent it's actually the 10th placed phone from all of our tests so it charges really really fast and it's superior to the xiaomi mi 6 and the htc 10 now we also did charging in steps so after five minutes we were at nine percent 15 minutes 21 percent and 30 minutes 52 percent one hour meant 90 percent charge we also have settings for the battery you can see them here there's power saving there's ultra power saving you can adjust the screen resolution there is a smart resolution option and you can go with hd plus to save some juice there is also darken interface colors and a one touch button optimized the battery is excellent maybe except for lacking let's say one hour and a half of continuous usage but with some tweaks i think you can achieve that via settings now when it comes to acoustics you're probably familiar that many phones have stereo acoustic nowadays these two so speaker here by the way two microphones here so speaker and earpiece they're both working together for a stereophony uh, we don't have an audio jack none here and none here so the bundle headphones use an usb type-c connector uh, what we also don't have is an equalizer in the music player you have one in the settings which is a bit annoying but let's listen to some tunes So you just heard it this one here provides the bass this one here provides the high notes uh, i wanted a bit more bass from the one at the top because uh, frankly speaking the bass is lacking in that area at least the one from the button takes care of it anyways the actual experience let's talk about it so we're dealing here with a loud and clear sound for sure a very deep bass good surround actually great surround slight vibration of the back no distortion and you cannot cover the speaker with your hand while gaming as you can see my fingers aren't touching it the living room right above it now I have a feeling when I'm using both speakers they feel like they're competing with each other they're trying to overlap each other and they're basically messing up with each other uh, they need better syncing so to say so one of them is competing with the other and so forth anyways let's go to those settings I mentioned before nope not the camera the settings so sound stereo plus which is basically landscape orientation means switching to stereo and the Huawei high stun sound effects you got headset effects got an equalizer 3d audio and the 3d can be set to near front or wide and then we have uh, more options but these are dial tones now the actual headphones you saw them in the unboxing they've been the same for a few years i won't even show you uh, they're basically clones of the apple earpods they're the same they're rigid not comfy but they have an okay volume and bass we also did the decibel meter test and let's see what came out of that first of all we got 82.9 decibels this was achieved with the test sample and achieved at the bottom of the phone at the top of the phone we achieved 71.7 decibels so the earpiece not that loud however the value from before is able to beat the iphone 6s and the huawei honor 8 scores below the huawei nova and the xiaomi mi a1 now the surprise came when we played games and we achieved 99 decibels which is very very good it's superior to the huawei p10 the huawei mate 9 pro but it's inferior to the sony xperia xa1 ultra which is one of the loudest phones like ever uh, time to talk about the camera so you're probably accustomed to the dual camera with leica tech from huawei we have a dual tone flash and uh, we have a whole array of things so first of all 20 megapixel monochrome sensor 12 megapixel color sensor and that one also has optical stabilization this time they have f 1.6 aperture i would say it's inaugurated by this phone or it's not lg v30 inaugurated it anyway there are four focus technologies here so we got laser autofocus depth detection contrast detection and face detection autofocus leica samilax h lenses are here there's dual isp for processing and the ai can identify around 14 scenes the ai also optimizes the bokeh speaking of bokeh you can take portrait bokeh shots with the front and megapixel camera as well as the back camera Time to check out the UI and if you've seen the Huawei P10 and the Mate 9 Pro you've seen them all as usual Huawei does not change the experience very much so we have a very fast capture 
ultra fast focus excuse me ultra fast uh, uh, and fluid zoom and as i said before the focus is quite impressive it's almost close to the level of the galaxy s7 and s8 which are basically masters of fast ultra fast focusing now of course we have the manual mode you can tweak your uh, focus white balance exposure shutter and iso plus the metering and then we have the main modes from photo to monochrome hdr 3d panorama night shot light painting time lapse slow-mo filter and more to download now the core features are here on the side you can choose uh, if you want more vivid colors smooth colors we got this motion picture well, moving picture which is basically the live photo from apple and we got here portrait mode which is to create the artistic uh, beauty level and also blur the background with a bit of bokeh and also wide aperture letting you play with aperture even during the shot and after the shot with no problem so those are the options and once again the front camera also takes portrait bokeh shots actually quite good ones as you'll see in a minute so the gallery is here 417 shots how crazy is that we took them on a december day it was rather cloudy pretty close to the sunset and still the camera performed now once again we are dealing with a dual camera and some of the shots will be monochrome those are actually better lit and better detailed now cloudy december day we were happy with the level of zoom although i've seen better on the sony xperia's excellent focus and colors and when i say excellent focus just look at that we have 417 shots okay so if you go through them you will find zero or maybe one out of focus picture that's how good the focus is and here we uh, focused on some details so excellent hue of red and very good close-up of a nail some phones like the iphone 10 or maybe the older sony xperia have trouble focusing up close well not this phone pretty dark sky and we're testing the zoom actual distance from the flags zoom in one zoom in twice and we are not losing many details although on the pc if you look at the shot we are actually losing details some close-ups of flowers and we're playing with the white aperture and the portrait with some impressive results focusing on the foreground and the background and producing some pretty amazing results check out the texture here and the amount of detail in this close-up when i'm talking about lack of details keep in mind i'm referring to the capacity of zoom and the landscape shots not the close-ups of course close-ups have details that's the whole point and I want to highlight the colors here. Recently I've played with the Google Pixel 2 XL and I was not happy with the hue of green. Also on the Huawei P10 Plus, not happy with the green. Here there's no problem. You can see my too much beautified face. Nobody has eyes like this. But if you get rid of beautification, you can achieve some pretty competent shots. I'm talking about the skin texture, the hair texture, and even the background looks quite okay. Well, it's a bit blurred, but still for a megapixel shooter is all right. We also played with the whole portrait thing i have to say that it's pretty close to what the majestic google pixel 2 xl offered us that one offered us the best portrait ever for a front and back camera and now we enter the park where we found more colorful stuff and we got to play with the bokeh and close-ups properly here we have uh, the famous tiger and we in the pool of course we did close-ups we played with the focus we got the wide aperture and even had a moving photo or two here it is moving and even with a bit of sound now here you can change the aperture if you want touch to refocus slide the bar and that's it in a nutshell this uh, option has been available from the huawei honor 6 if i remember correctly here we have a bouncy castle which is being uh, uh, which is losing air basically great colors great texture great everything and here we have zero beautification possibly explaining wrinkles and uh, dark patches under the eyes anyways i'm happy with the selfies not as happy as on the iphone 10 and on the iphone 8 plus but still pretty close in uh, portrait to the google pixel 2 xl now i want to talk about texture so one of these objects has a bit of leather or imitation of leather you can almost feel it here you see the way the leather is used here you can actually feel it through the photo so that's what texture involves on this phone very happy with the results this is certainly a top five or top three phone camera wise these are monochrome shots of course they have more detail there are 20 megapixel shots they catch light better and they're really something to look at 
they're more artistic than the usual ones. So the panorama was a bit of a letdown, it's basically 9000 or 10,000 pixels over 2300 pixels, I was expecting a bit more and overall I would have to say that other than the details sometimes I'm pretty happy with the cameras and also pretty good dynamic range, forgot to mention that. The conclusion is that this phone is easily comparable to the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, it can feel like it's equal and it can also fight on par with the Sony Xperia XC1 and Google Pixel 2 XL, it handles the colors better than the Pixel 2 XL, it takes better selfies than the Galaxy Note 8, it catches less details and has a poorer zoom than the Note 8 and the Xperia XZ1, however it can fight on the same tier as those phones and I feel it's miles superior to the Huawei P10 and about 10 or 15% superior to the Mate 9 Pro before it, that's always something nice, it would be weird to have a phone inferior to this predecessor. Now we move to low light, nighttime capture, as you're expecting, it's very bright, f1.6 aperture is the trick, I'm going to mention texture again because it's palpable in these shots, of course not that good details during the night, but also no problems with the colors, you will not find yellowish hue, blue hues or pink hues, as uh, sometimes you will find in some photos at night on some other handsets. Perfect street light halos, this is actually on par with the Galaxy S8 and Note 8, the conditions are excellent here as you can see, colors are perfect, the brightness is excellent and the flash is doing a great job without modifying the image too much. I feel that these street lamps are a bit warmer than usual than what I've seen on other phones and in general the shots at night were a bit warmer but not as warm as the Mate 9 Pro which exaggerated a bit with that thing. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed by the black and white shots, they create a bit of a ghosting effect or maybe that's just the vibe of the city, anyways if you really zoom in you'll see that the black and white shots are not very impressive during the night time, however the color ones are truly majestic, excellent flash, excellent brightness, focus and once again the phone never failed focusing during the night time and yes we also played with the whole uh, bokeh thing and wide aperture and had a lot of fun with it. I would have to say this is certainly top 3017, it beats the Galaxy S8 and it fights the Galaxy Note 8 and Xperia XZ1 on par, I even feel that it goes past the Sony Xperia XZ1 at night and it's the equal of the Pixel to excel only a bit brighter it seems to me and I would also say that it beats the iPhone 8 Plus and it's supposed to be the best Huawei phone ever at night. I don't know if you know, but Huawei usually makes good phones in the camera area, except when it comes to low light picture. This one solves the problem and offers a capable low light capture. Now it's time to talk about something else and by something else I mean videos. Luckily we have a video player so we don't have to sort through the videos uh, in a pretty hard manner. I'm going to start off with a slow motion clip which is quite good, not on par with uh, what the iPhones are offering and what the Sony Xperia is offering but quite okay in my book. Now let's go to the other video. So first of all we shot MP4 Full HD 30 frames per second and 13 mega per second which is a bit of a bummer, I'm used to seeing 20 mega per second for Full HD videos and let's see them one by one. So this is the first, a bit of panning, a bit of zooming, so I would have to say that the clarity is quite good, I'm also happy with the color calibration and the brightness. Um, there are some flaky areas, that's the word flaky, not exactly shaky, but uh, it's as if it were about to lose focus. There's a bit of flicker and refocusing which appears when you're walking, so let's go to the walking video, because we actually have a few of those. So, first of all there's this one, if you see it on a full screen you'll notice that while we're walking there's a bit of a flicker and a bit of a refocus going on but I'm happy with the colors here, the calibration, the dynamic range, whatever you want and with moving objects it has zero problems. Okay, now one of my favorite videos has got to be this one with the bouncy castle but I get to that later. When filming with the front camera I'm happy with the way my face is rendered, the skin texture and the color, that's everything perfect, so if you're a vlogger you'll be happy with it, but the background is certainly blurred, a lot blurred and uh, through that it's inferior to the Sony Xperia XZ1. Now we get to better things, uh, we have this video here, if I'm not mistaken it's a 4K clip, it has pretty impressive dynamic range, excellent microphone capture, yes it's a bit dark but it was a darker area and some more clouds than usual. 
details are I would say solid but overall when we take into account the full HD and all that I would have liked a bit more details and finally my favorite clip this one bouncy castle 4k load of colors movement and this is actually one of the better ones possibly the best video shot on a Huawei phone ever if you zoom in you will not lose details usually Huawei phones don't film that good so well this is actually one of the good ones here we have some extra color and here you can actually see that some areas are too lit which is strange it was close to sunset there was no light so the camera is sort of artificially generating too much light in some areas Overall, while the clarity is good, the colors are nice and all that, I would have to say that it feels below what the Galaxy Note 8, Sony Xperia XZ1 and the latest iPhones are offering. Still, usually Huawei phones don't film that good, so this is actually superior to the Huawei P10, P10 Plus and the Mate 9 Pro, so there is that. Now, when it comes to the uh, low light capture, things look like this. And I'm afraid to say I'm a bit disappointed here. So we got a bit of a yellowish hue, we got some motion blur, we got pretty big halos, a bit of refocusing, uh, the zoom also seems rather poor, uh, a bit of motion blur appears here and there, there's a bit of flicker when moving around, but at least the microphone was solid and the colors are not half bad. But the camera does feel a little bit prone to refocusing. Colors feel a bit too warm, and you can see the street lights shaking when we're moving the camera even a bit. I would actually recommend you film only in 4K with this phone because the results are excellent and I am pretty surprised you will not film in 4K at 60 frames per second even though the CPU kind of can do it. Now we move further to other aspects like the web browser as you can see I'm wielding SwiftKey. We're loading up our website on Chrome pretty fast. Also good uh, benchmark results in Sun Spider and also in uh, Velamo. Once again, we got Swifty, got Swipe, uh, Swift Key, not Swifty, uh, and now it's time for the connectivity test. So, the phone comes in dual SIM and a single SIM version, and it has GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C, Wi-Fi Direct, there's Bluetooth 4.2, which I'm surprised to see, it should be 5.0, uh, BLE, APTX HD support, that's a mouthful, we also have DisplayPort 1.2, you can hook up the phone to a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse and use it like a PC. There's an infrared emitter here at the top, you can control appliances, there's NFC, uh, what else, LDAC, HD, USB Type-C at the bottom, of course, bunch of microphones, LT category 18, which is actually a premiere on this phone, 3 carrier aggregation and up to 1.2 giga per second downloads on 4.5G in the future. Now, uh, as far as the calls are concerned, I loved the noise cancelling, it was excellent, calls were loud and clear, and we also had some pretty good results in the speed test, which I am about to search for you here. So let's go on a road trip, here we go, pretty solid results on Wi-Fi up to 377 mega per second downloads and 25 mega per second uploads on 4G, 102 and 66, all of them excellent results. Now it's time to talk about audio and Emotion UI 8.0. So this handset is running Android 8.0 Oreo with Emotion UI 8.0 on top and at first sight you will not tell it. So if you look at the Huawei Mate 9 Pro and the Huawei P10, the interface is pretty much the same. Basically Android Oreo is hidden underneath the covers of this custom interface. Still if you keep tapped on an icon you will see that you'll have several shortcuts from it. That's one thing and um, we also have badges available here. And uh, if you keep press the screen or if you pinch it, we got wallpaper, widgets, transitions and settings. Widgets are the same as the previous generation, minimalistic and pretty standard. Uh, transitions are also standard. Settings involve layout, auto-align, shake and all that. Multitasking is still done via carousel and of course, we also have a, a split screen option. So you can have Chrome and then you can also watch your videos at the same time so i'm going through the camera i'm going through our website at the same time via split screen so that's it in a nutshell now if you're wondering about the leftmost screen area is the google feed with all the info you need apparently in some regions it's some other feed the drop down portion is elegant and it's a hybrid of stock android and typical huawei options we got eye comfort we got the navigation dock and even screen recording which somehow cannot easily be found in the classic settings speaking of settings this area is quite generous, but it's now more nested. It has been reduced to a smaller list. We got basic stuff. We got uh, do not disturb, Wi-Fi, device connection, apps and notifications, 
display, sound, storage. We also have a memory cleaner, which is always good to have. Security, smart assistant, there's one hand UI, motion control, voice control, gloves mode. You can use split screen gestures, you can use your knuckles take a smart screenshot and all that uh, we have google services system update and so forth and i'm not willing to forget about this we got the fingerprint id which can wake up the phone take a photo take a video answer a call stop an alarm and when swiped can pull down this tray and also navigate in the photos in order to trigger it you're going to have to pass through a setup and enroll it by using i would say nine ten steps Okay, that's it. So let's see just how fast it is and be warned, it's very fast. So just by tapping it once and fast on the go, it unlocks, so check this out. Barely touched it, now the phone is off, not pressing anything, barely touched it, it's unlocked, which is pretty impressive in my book. Now other things we're mentioning here, I guess it's time to talk about the apps. There's a lot of them pre-installed, I counted. 52 asus used to have as many but they reduced the number anyways some of the most interesting ones we got booking.com we got drive we got facebook we got files high care health has received a new interface looks pretty stylish closer to samsung health uh, phone clone amazon prime and one of the best is translator which supports a ton of languages and can translate from text from photos and from audio so konnichiwa Osaka Okasa So that's my experience with Japanese, we have a lot of other languages, Arabic, Catalan, Danish, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Norwegian and so forth, so very useful when you're in a foreign country, very very useful. And I only touch the surface of what you can do. Now people are talking a lot about the AI, this phone is supposedly all about the AI. So covers a few aspects so the most important one thanks to the ai and the neural processing unit uh, the apps will start up with 12 percent faster than on the previous phones it's able to translate the camera is able to recognize objects and scenarios uh, we got the combination of cloud and ai working together the apps start up faster and when i'm talking about apps i'm also referring to apps that need ai you know like prisma like face app those that really need strong resources those will actually move faster on this phone than on other modern phones and as time passes the phone will learn from your habits and will start up apps faster use less resources and also use less battery which is a pretty big deal in the future it will get better recognized photos it's already supposed to have the best recognition of 2000 photos at once uh, compared to other phones out there it's certainly the future and now with that covered i guess it's time to go to the verdict now on the pros we have uh, the fact that the phone is elegant certainly well built it's got a crisp screen with some pretty okay colors it's got top 5 performance for sure an excellent battery for video playback and also excellent in charge other pluses include a pretty loud speaker at the bottom and at the top well more at the bottom perfect pictures when it comes to the selfies and the regular pics especially the close-ups excellent bokeh shots portrait shots uh, fast and snappy functioning in general it's really snappy no trace of lag and i'm sure of that for many years to come uh, i would also have to say that the projection feature is pretty cool and i also love the ai related features those are the pros now speaking of the cons i have to mention the fact that the back side will draw some fingerprints and grease the phone is full hd only which for a flagship is a bummer nowadays some phones even have 4k displays uh, the screen is not that bright the pc mark continuous usage benchmark wasn't impressive the back vibrates when you listen to music the speakers will overlap a bit um, the details of the shots we've taken feel a bit poor at times the videos were a bit underwhelming stabilization not that impressive as well so it stabilizes pretty okay but not even close to the xperia xz1 or galaxy note 8 and the os has stayed the same even though it has oreo you cannot feel it has oreo it's basically the same experience as the previous mui they did nothing really new there's no micro sd there's no audio jack and that's the list of cons in the end this is still the prettiest and most powerful huawei phone to date for sure it would be bought by people who already had a huawei phone maybe two years ago maybe three years ago and they want something new even though on paper it sounds like a big phone believe me it's actually not it's only a compact phone 
with a big screen that's what we're getting here and a lot of power and ai and a kick-ass camera it's got the best design from huawei the best camera from all huawei phones and the only drawbacks are maybe the continuous usage let's say the screen um, uh, brightness and also maybe the videos although if you're always filming 4k you have zero problems with that so in the end a pretty solid phone it can beat a galaxy s8 but a note 8 iphone 10 and uh, google pixel 2 xl well not so much so it's more of a rival for the first half of the year flagships than the second half so that's the conclusion for this handset here luckily the huawei p11 will come soon enough and complete all the that's lacking here this is it from gsn.com Bye-bye.